to begin the big job of cleaning up and putting their lives back together. After Bright, the storms moved across the Ohio border and into Harrison, a town that tonight is literally in shreds. News 5's Clyde Gray joins us now live from Harrison, which I understand at one point was closed to outsiders. Clyde? All right, Jerry. In fact, it was closed to outsiders at one point, primarily to keep traffic down so that the utility crews could get to work and get the lines back up and get the, re the, the power and the uh, telephone service restored. Uh, that is, should be pretty much over now. People are being allowed to get back into the community. You can talk about the destruction here. You can try to imagine it, but until you actually see it for yourself, you just can't put a, get a real handle on it. Uh, I saw a house with a roof blown off. I've seen uh, aluminum siding shredded off houses. I've seen trees twisted and torn. And then, of course, there's this house where one whole end of the house literally blown away by the tornado that passed right through this area just last night. You've got to see it to believe it, and that's what Governor Dick Celeste did earlier today, first by air, by helicopter, and then later on, on the ground, on foot, the governor toured this area, taking a look at just how terribly devastated it was prior to asking the federal government in Washington, and we believe that's what he's going to do, for a, for a declaration of a federal disaster area, which would then allow federal money to flow into this area so that some of the repair and rebuilding can begin. You might say that the folks here spent a, knife in utter, a night rather, in utter disbelief. Most of the people uh, in this area, fortunately, never have to deal with uh, the kind of devastation that I've experienced here firsthand today. News 5's Curtis Fuller was one of the first reporters on the scene last night, just minutes after the tornado did its damage here. He shows us how the twister did, in fact, cause a lot of fear here as well, but people here are now determined to overcome the destruction. It was a night everyone in Harrison will remember. For Bob and Rita Conley, this is all that's left of their home of 15 years. Even though what you see here is a mess, uh, God kept the precious things precious and he kept them alive, and that's, that's the important things in life to me. It's that type of faith a lot of folks here have. You see, in just a matter of moments, Mother Nature ripped this town apart. Windows were blown to bits, trees were uprooted, and electrical wires were left dangling all over the place. It was a scary scene. All of a sudden, I heard people screaming and yelling. They're not there? Who is that? It was power lines down and trees uprooted. And we finally made it down here. Luckily, we could have been killed. This is what folks in Harrison woke up to. Daylight brought an image to Harrison no one really wanted to see, like this house, just ripped apart. And then you could see the debris scattered all over the place. You know, after spending all day and all night here, you begin to wonder, how did it happen so fast? Then you look into the faces of the folks who live in this community, and you begin to wonder, where do they go from here? Carolyn Oberslake found the roof blown off her tire store. Our life is in this. <laughs> And I hope we can get it back together and, and uh, get back in business and, uh, you know, get things going again. But it won't be easy to forget this storm. It made the folks feel helpless. It made them just want to run away. But there was no place to run. Curtis Fuller, News 5. As you can see, looking around, there is debris all over the place. That's a stack of it there. Tree limbs, insulation, wood, that sort of thing. Shingles all over the neighborhood here. News 5 Steve Forrest spent the day in Harrison today, and while many people are counting their blessings that they survived without the loss of a single life here, Steve Forrest tells us that they are not looking forward to picking up the pieces. The cleanup's been going since daybreak, and there's a lot to clean up. Siding peeled from houses like onion paper, whole rooms disintegrated by the wind's force, and pieces of some houses embedded in others. If you need any further proof, it took two tow trucks to get this camper upright. Last night, it took the wind only seconds to lurch it over. I came out after it was over, and uh, it was turned over. That's all. And you said? I just took a double look. I couldn't believe it. Others couldn't believe what the wind had done to their roof. This family has no roof. It ended up here about the length of a football field away. And then, Denise Sierra. Her house wasn't hit too badly, but the thing is, it wasn't going to be her house too much longer. Closing was tomorrow. Yeah, we were moving Friday. What are you going to do now? I have no idea. I really don't know. We have to, we're trying to contact our real estate lady, but we can't get in touch with her. She lives in Bright. We can't get through on the phone. 
so. She may not have a house either. Nope. Still, most people like Sierra are maintaining a good attitude about what happened here last night. They can afford to. Nobody died. Nobody was seriously injured. And you can always replace a wall. Stay Forest, News 5. Well, right now, you're looking at a couple of people working to repair a roof. There's a lot of that around here. Neighbor helping neighbor. Unfortunately, that can be dangerous. We understand that one man was helping to repair a roof uh, somewhere in the area that was damaged by the storm. Fell off that roof, had to be air cared to University Hospital, where he is now undergoing surgery. Just a couple of quick things about the cleanup here. Utility crews for CG&E and Cincinnati Bell are working to restore full utility service here. We understand from CG&E that it will be tomorrow before they get power 100% restored, but that some of the houses along here do have some power restored. This is Clyde Gray live for News 5 in Harrison. Jerry? Okay, thanks a lot, Clyde. Great work. The storm obviously left a terrible mark on Harrison, but... The damage was just as devastating as it moved east to Springfield Township. It leveled a strip mall on Hamilton Avenue and caused lots of other damage. News 5's Jeff Hirsch tells us now about the destruction there. Saw the lightning, heard the thunder, lit the candles and headed for the basement. 90 seconds later it was over and in that minute and a half much of the Pleasant Run Farm subdivision was ripped apart. Well, my parents built this house 23 years ago, as did most of the neighbors here, still the same people. And I just see a lot of history just being destroyed in a couple seconds, which is so hard for me to understand how, it can do, how this can happen. You know, it's one of those cliches, you always hear it whenever there's a tornado, but then when you get up here, you can really tell that it's true. It's amazing. One house could be totally leveled, the house next door untouched. That's the incredible thing about a tornado, it's unpredictability, but at least there was warning on radio, TV, and the storm alert sirens. Jan Probst rushed her six-year-old and three-year-old into the basement before her house was devastated. If you hadn't have gotten your kids out of their rooms, what would have happened? Well, I'm not sure about my son because he has a center room, but my daughter, I believe, uh, she might have been gone. How much time did you have? How fast did you have to move? About two minutes. Now the cleanup is underway, people helping each other. Here, Bobby. Break that up and use it. Yes, people helping each other rebuild their houses and their lives, too. I just can't believe the whole thing happened. I mean, you see it on the news all the time to other people, and you think, this is never going to happen to me. Well, it can't happen to you. And it doesn't hit home until it does happen to you. Jeff Hirsch, News 5. Springfield Township trustees have declared the affected neighborhoods disaster areas, and they've requested state assistance. 13 homes and businesses were destroyed, dozens were damaged. In addition, there'll be no school at Pleasant Run Elementary and Pleasant Run Middle School. I should also tell you that Harrison Elementary School also is canceled for at least tomorrow. Now, as the storm swept further east, Fairfield Township got caught in the middle. High winds knocked pow out all over town, and just out front of Lotter's Marine, the heavy gusts blew about a dozen boats into the middle of Route 4. No one was injured when the boats got loose, but damage is estimated to be about $30,000. After devastating parts of Fairfield, the storm headed east, smashing through Tylersville Road Business District. You're looking at damage done to the Waffle House when a giant sign collapsed onto the roof. And right across the street, the Courtyard Sportsplex lost a good portion of its roof. Miraculously, no one was seriously hurt. Traffic there was backed up for blocks due to the hundreds of sightseers trying to get a glimpse of the shredded signs and buildings. The tornadoes and storms seem to have followed somewhat of a straight line through Hamilton and Butler counties. But one of the twisters got loose and found its way into northern Kentucky. Major damage is being reported in Boone County. Florence took the brunt of the storm. The neighborhood just east of the Florence Mall suffered major damage. Rooftops are missing, trees are down. Most of the folks in the area say they heard the twister coming. It was a split of a second, you know. It was just a hit from the west and uh, real loud noise, you know, and we walked into uh, my son's room and it was literally wiped out. It quieted down for a few minutes, so I came upstairs and looked out the back and there was no furniture on the deck. Well, I looked around and I found it and came out the front door and there were police and fire engines and everything all over. That's when I realized a lot of the roofs were missing, windows were missing. So far, we have no reports of injuries in northern Kentucky, just a lot of damage and debris to be cleaned up in the next few days. Work crews out here in Florence say it'll take at least that long to clear fallen trees away from streets and roads.
Well, what a day it has been. Remember the uh, tornadoes of 1974, and I suspect the biggest difference between what we suffered last night and what we suffered, suffered in 1974 is now there are warnings. Now there really is the kind of uh, uh, warning system set up to help everybody, and lives were saved because of it. When we return to News 5 at 6, a hero's tale out of this tornado disaster, we'll tell you about a teenager who heard the warning signs and told his family to take cover just minutes before their home was hit. So in Illinois from the Twisters, the governor of Indiana says at least 150 people were injured in his state, some seriously. He has declared a state of emergency, and the National Guard has been out to help clean up this mess. The towns of Bedford and Petersburg, west of Indianapolis, appear to have gotten the worst of the storm in Indiana. Well, the effects of this disaster on property is astounding, and as we said earlier, it was a good warning system that saved many lives. But meteorologist Joe Lazora joins us now to tell us about one teenager who may have saved his entire family. Joe? It sounds hard to believe, you know, but when you go through a, a community like this, Harrison, you hear so many different stories. You know, I was here, I was there, I heard this, I heard that. I came across one story today that I found just absolutely amazing, so I thought I'd bring it to you. It's about a fella who knew exactly what to do when he heard the sirens. You hear the caution time and time again. Know what to do if a tornado strikes your area. In Harrison, Ohio tonight, residents are glad they knew what to do. Behind me right here is the Sidwell residence, and I spoke with Mr. Sidwell just a few moments ago, and he said that, uh, that just before the tornado hit, they knew what to do. They took cover underneath the steps in the front of their house in their by level. That gave them the protection, and when the tornado hit their house, everyone in it was safe. As miraculous as it sounds, everyone in Harrison knew what protection to take and took it just in the nick of time. People were listening to the radio, they saw the weather was getting bad and they thought a storm was going to come in or something and then they heard about a tornado and they said it was supposed to touch down about 15 minutes in Harrison and people started getting pretty freaked out. So I called home, you know, because I was pretty scared, you know, for my family because, you know, everybody was home and I was gone. So I called and I told them about it. I told them all to get down to the basement. And so they all went down there. I said about five minutes after I called and they went downstairs, it hit and <laughs> messed up our house. Tonight, despite all of this damage, residents will rest well knowing that not a single resident was injured. And that house was literally destroyed and will have to be knocked down, probably cannot be rebuilt. Again, just to recap real quickly, there is a, a tornado warning in effect for Fayetteville, Indiana, and also tornado watch in effect until 11 p.m. Chris Wright will be here in just a couple of minutes with all the details. Jerry? Hey, thanks, Joe. Thanks for staying on top of all of this all day. Now, when we come back to News 5 meteorologist Chris Wright, as we said, it will tell us that the nastiest weather may be gone, but we're not in the clear yet. This forecast is next. Let's take a look now at the radar screen, and you can see the developments. A murderer he can't hold. Japanese embassy. We have a thunderstorm watch for the entire tri-state until 11 o'clock. One thing I want to caution people now, we are under a severe thunderstorm watch. Severe thunderstorms can and do produce tornadoes with little or no warning. That's something you want to keep in mind, so uh, start making your plans now to get safe. Okay. All righty. Let's go outside and take a look at what is going to be another active weather, uh, other than another active night of weather here in the Tri-State tonight. You're taking a look at a live shot of clear to partly cloudy skies right now, but there is some rainfall slowly moving this way. Right now, 80 degrees, humidity 39%, and the winds are very strong from the southwest and gusting up to 31 miles per hour. Barometer is falling as a strong low pressure system is steadily moving across this area of the country. Today's high temperature made it up to 80 degrees. Here's a look at live action radar once again. The areas you're seeing flashing, this is the area right here that's now moving just near Dayton that produced a thunderstorm over in northern Dearborn County in Indiana. And there's the one that's causing the uh, tornadic activity. And that is why there is a th tornado warning in effect uh, for Fayetteville. These storms are moving east southeastward. As you can see, two bands of storms They'll be moving through the Cincinnati area in the next hour and a half or so, so we're not out of the woods yet as far as the severe weather is concerned. Your forecast for tonight shapes up like this. You'll see the rain and thunder ending later on tonight, but we do have a severe thunderstorm watch in effect until 11 o'clock tonight, low temperature at 52. For tomorrow's weather, a sunny day, breezy and cool with a high temperature at 67. Here's your five-day forecast. Our viewing air report of a tornado that touched down earlier in northern Randolph County, northwest of Dayton. So it looked like it may be starting up again. Keep the TV sets on, keep the radio uh, set on. We need to find out what's happening. Thanks a lot. All right. Well, we're out of time for now. Stay tuned. NBC Nightly News is next with a complete wrap-up on today's summit events. Clyde Gray will be back tonight at 11. Until now, with love's languages. And each other. Good night.
South 